Hey guys, it's Shauna and welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new here. Um, I'm so excited for today's video. We're going to be doing a punch needle rug tutorial. So a couple weeks ago, I made a huge rug for my apartment in LA and I brought you guys through the journey on my TikTok and a lot of people asked for a tutorial or like how to punch needle and how to get started. So I thought I would make another little rug thing and bring you guys through it on a tutorial. So for this one, I'm going to be making a smaller design in the shape of a flower. And my plan is to paint it on my wall instead of putting it on the ground as a rug. But the same technique would use if you wanted to actually make a rug that would be put on the ground. Um, I just want to put it on the wall. <laughs> so what you're going to need is some Munz cloth. You can get this at Joann's, probably Michael's, or even I've seen them on Amazon. Um, they're relatively cheap. I got a really big piece of it, about one yard by two yards, and I used the majority of it to make my rug and I'm just going to use the leftovers for this project. You're also going to need a frame to punch needle on and the easiest way that I found to do this if you want to make um, a smaller thing is to just use a canvas. I'm going to be using this canvas that I got off Amazon and we're going to take the actual canvas part off of it and then use the wooden frame as the um, as a little frame for our punch needling rug, if that made sense. So if you're using something a little bit smaller, you could go ahead and use um, a canvas like I am, but if you're making anything bigger, then making frames aren't, isn't too hard, and there's a lot of YouTube videos already out there on how to make your own like wooden frame. Next, you're going to be needing a punch needle, of course, and a little threader, because they are impossible to thread without them, and then whatever colors of yarn that you want. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off this canvas, I guess. I've never done this before and people say that you can still use the canvas even after you take it off if you're just careful about it. So I'm going to try to be careful because I think it would be fun to then paint something on the canvas and also hang that on my wall. If you can't tell, I'm really desperate for some wall decor because my bedroom down the hall is very empty at the moment and I'm trying to make some DIY posters, some decals like on the low for cheap because posters are so expensive like I was not hip to that. So hopefully I can do a little something with this. I'm gonna try to use a fork to take the staples out of the canvas, but I don't know if that's gonna work, but we're gonna see. I might need something thinner than a fork. Okay, I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna rip the canvas like past the, the staples that they have in there. I'll show you. Okay, one side is done. I used like scissors and also just like my brute force to unhinge it. So I'm gonna do the other three sides and I'll see you when I'm done with that. Success. We got them taken apart. Now I need to cut this thing off. You just want it to be a square, a rectangle. You don't want anything in the middle. Um, I had my brother look at this before I left to come back to LA and he said I could just use a knife because it was really thin. Um, which is like a kitchen knife, so if that doesn't work, then I blame my brother Maldi. Okay, it worked. My brother's a genius. I just used a kitchen knife, sawed it down a little bit, and eventually it fell off. So now, I'm like out of breath from that. So now, we have just the frame. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna swatch myself in the face with that. So the next thing we're going to do, or I'm going to do, is draw my design on Mutt's cloth. So when I bought my punch needle, it also came with a little bit of like other things that um, you could use for this type of project, and one of them was a fabric marker. So I'm going to go ahead and use that fabric marker to draw my design on, but you could use a sharpie, a pen, anything that will just show up. Okay, so when you're doing punch needle, you want to make sure that your fabric, so in this case the Munz cloth, is really tight and taut. It's kind of like what embroidering, if you know how to do that. You put the ring um, around the fabric so that it stays nice and tight and you can push and pull your needle in and out. So same deal with punch needling. So we have our empty canvas frame and to make sure that the Munz cloth is really tied tightly and to make this frame reusable, we're going to um, hammer nails all around the edges and with the nails you can pull the Munz cloth and like poke it through the nails to make sure that it stays nice and tight so I went to Home Depot and got a box of nails this whole thing was literally two dollars and it's called panel board nails so they are a little bit thinner and should go through this wood hopefully very easily um, and then of course I got my trusty little hammer
Okay, I finished hammering. So as you can see, the nails are sticking out. And I nailed them in, so like even though the pointy side isn't sticking out, um, the Munz cloth has little holes in it, so it'll still be able to pull tightly around the nails. Okay, I'm back. It is a couple days later, honestly. Probably like a week or two later, I got a little unmotivated with this project and just like took a couple days off, which is totally fine. But I am back and better than ever. I went to Joann's, my go-to, and picked up a bunch of yarn. I'm using the Big Twist 100% acrylic yarn. I've like heard some people say that that's like the best. You want to use like 100% acrylic. Maybe it's like softer, a little bit more durable maybe. Not quite sure. Um, and then I have also white. So I've blue white green it's my yellow and a dark blue i'm not sure if i'm going to use this dark blue i just had it left over for my previous project so where i left off a couple days ago was i made the frame and attached the month's cloth so now i have it all made and you want to be aware of the nails you want to just like be careful while doing it so i have the frame and everything and now we're going to get punch needling Okay, so we're finally at the actual punch needle part of this video that y'all have probably been waiting for. So here we go. So you'll need a punch needle and a threader. To thread the punch needle, take the looped part of the threader and push it through the side hole of the needle and all the way up the other end. Then take your yarn and put it through the threader's loop and then just pull it out the other end and it'll pull the yarn all the way down the needle and through the side hole that you had originally put the threader through. This will thread your needle successfully and then you're ready to go and honestly, threading the needle is the most complicated part of this entire process. So to start punch needling, every time that you start with a new thread or you're just starting the project to begin with, you want to poke the punch needle through the month's cloth and reach behind the other side and pull the little tail through. So as you can see, I'm doing that here and I'm just pulling it through and then once you do that, you're ready to go. So punch needling is exactly what it sounds like. You are punching the needle through the holes of the fabric over and over and over again to create little loops of thread. And there's really only a couple of rules you have to follow, so that's why this is like the best craft ever in my opinion. Rule number one, always have the face of the needle pointing in the direction you are moving in. So as you see here, the punch needle kind of has two sides to it. The side with the open diagonal cut is the face, or at least that's what I like to call it. The other side I call the tail because the thread trails behind it. You want to make sure the face is pointing in the way you are working in. So if you are punch needling horizontally, the face of the needle should also be pointing that way and the tail of thread should be following behind. So as you can see here, I am just tracing the design I drew and I have the face of the needle pointing the way that I am moving and I'm just rhythmically punching up and down through the holes in the month cloth to create the loops on the back side. Rule number two, only bring your needle up the smallest amount between each punch. I'm poking the needle through the month's cloth, then bringing it up just the tiniest bit and moving it forward to the next hole, and then re-poking it and continuing that motion. This creates little loops on the front side of the month's cloth, which will be the front side of your rug, and that's what gives it that like rug look and texture. Rule number three, make sure your yarn is not pulled tightly. So when you're punch needling, just make sure to pull like an excessive amount of yarn out of the spool so that your yarn isn't pulled tightly. If the yarn is pulled tautly, the punch needle won't work at all and won't create those loops on the other side of the fabric. So yeah, those are basically the three rules you need to know to punch needle. What is also really nice about this craft is that if you mess up, you can simply pull the thread and loops out so quickly and then redo it. This also means that you need to be careful while working because one wrong move and your entire rug is undone. The last thing you need to know how to do is how to end the yarn. So whenever you want to switch colors or you just want to stop for the day, poke your punch needle through the month's cloth as if you were going to continue punch needling, but instead flip to the other side of the month's cloth and cut the little tail in half. So as you can see in this video, I poked the punch needle through and then I'm snipping the little tail that is coming out of the needle in half and that leaves a little piece of yarn and you can go ahead and snip that off and make it shorter so it blends in or I like to save it and do them all at the end. Yeah. 
finished it only took me like three days I think to do this all and I didn't work on it a lot each day like today I did it in class sorry professor and then I did it a little bit just now while I was watching Scandal no how to get away with murder the Scandal crossover if if you know you know um, but I finished I'm going to now cut off all these little loose strings so like every time you stopped the thread and cut it or you switch colors or something you probably left a little tail. You can go ahead and like snip those off as you work, but I kind of just do it all at once at the end. So I'm just going to flip it over to the back where the nails are coming out, and I'm just going to slide them off the nails really gently. Um, make sure I don't ruin any, any other parts of it. And you just want to be gentle with it during this stage because we haven't applied the glue on the back or the backing. So if you pull on the threads themselves, they will unravel. So you just want to make sure that you're being careful so you don't undo all your hard work. So now I have it just on the month's cloth. You know, that was easy. And I'm going to go ahead and snip off all those little tails. Now that all the little tails are cut off, I'm going to trim the month's cloth right around the edges of the design. Um, and then we're gonna do some spray on glue and add the backing and then we're all done. So for the glue part, I use this Gorilla Spray Adhesive that I got from Home Depot, probably for just a couple bucks. It was pretty cheap. And I used it for my rug and I still have a lot left over because you get a lot in the can and you don't use that much. And then for the backing, any type of fabric will work. You can like go to Joann's or Michael's and get some strap fabrics that's just like big enough to cover your entire design. But I don't want to like buy new fabric, so I just went through my closet, found something that I don't use anymore, and that just happened to be this pillowcase. So I'll show you guys how I add that on next. So I first started by cutting the design off the month's cloth, and it's okay, don't worry about being too precise. You don't want to get too close to the actual yarn and accidentally cut it, so it's okay if you leave a little bit of a border. We're going to deal with that later. After I cut it out of the month's cloth, I also cut the same shape out of the pillowcase, which I was using as the backing, so just do that with whatever fabric you plan to use as the backing. After that, I got the spray adhesive glue that I mentioned previously and sprayed that on the back around the edges of the design. I then folded up the white space, so those little borders that we left when cutting. So I folded them up so they wouldn't be noticeable from the front side. And if you also going to use this glue, just be careful while doing this with your bare hands because it is super glue and it will stick to your skin very easily. Once you're done folding up the edges, you can spray the entire thing and then place your backing and then cut off any extra fabric that you might have left. This is how it turned out and since it's pretty lightweight, I just held it up with one push pin on my wall and I think it's really cute. Walking down the hall, she keeps asking. 